everyone you're welcome to my channel today and thank you for stopping by if this is your first time of coming across this channel this channel is centered around sewing i make sewing tutorial videos pattern drafting and ready to wear outfits as well so before i proceed with today's tutorial i'd like to thank all my subscribers thank you for your subscription and if you're here to subscribe please do kindly do so so in today's tutorial i'll be teaching you how to draft a fitted trouser with a pocket so there are some basic lines which we need for this tutorial and number one you'll be needing your waistline that's the first one you'll be needing your waistline you need your hip lens your crush lens your knee lens and your full lens so these are the basic lines you need to put into consideration before you start drafting a trouser so now I'll just get started with this tutorial. So on that point where my hand is, that will be my waistline and my measurement will be starting from there. And I just marked out half inch because that half inch will, will serve as my joining allowance because I'll be working with a band of one inch. I hope you understand. So I'm I'm just going to remove one and half inch, half inch for my joining allowance and one inch is for my band. I hope you understand now, right? So I just went ahead to rub, mark down all the measurements which I've been needing for this. So the first one I'll be marking will be my hip line, which is 8 inches, my crotch line, which is 11 inches, and my knee length is that one which I'm marking, which is usually 18 to 19 inches. That's the standard measurement. And the line which I'm marking at that end is my um, full length plus 2 inches, so you know, joining allowance. So I'll just go ahead now and extend all these lines which I just marked. So now after marking all of this, I'll just come to that my waistline that my waistline i'll just come to that point and you see where my hand is now just to that point there i'm going to mark um two inches i previously marked one and a half so i later realized and i corrected myself so you mark two inches and you're going to connect from that point to that your hip line which is that first line which we marked after the waistline so you just connect the way I'm, I just connected here and you come to your knee line you're going to go in by 1.5 inches or one and a half on your knee line and don't forget the standard measurement is usually 18 to 19 so on your full length you also come in by um, 2.5 inches on your knee line sorry on your full length so that's basically all i did and i'll just um connect all these lines with my ruler just the way i'm showing you here okay i've actually done a tutorial on this but this one is actually going to be fitted the other one is for a palazzo cotton right so now i divided my waist circumference by four and i just added two inches sewing or stitching allowance then i'll come to my hip line on my hip length and i'll divide by four as well and i'll add two inches stitching or sewing allowance so my crotch line now this is where we are going to divide by two because on our hip and our waistline we divided by four but when you get to your crotch line divide by two please not four you divide by two that's your thigh or your lap just make sure it's you divide by two so my lap is actually 27 so divided by two i have 13 and a half i hope i'm correct so you just mark it there and on this your crotch line because it's going to be a fitted trouser you're going to include one inch stitching allowance for my other tutorial i know on the crotch line we, and we added two inches but because it's actually going to be a fitted trouser so that's why so just connect the way i just 
I'm just doing here to your waistline down to your crotch line so now um, in this particular um, trouser which is going to be fitted you can go ahead as well to measure your knee circumference you can go ahead to measure your knee circumference and mark it but me I'm used to um, a freehand method so I didn't bother doing this and please I forgot to include your ankle circumference you are going to measure your round ankle please at your full length and while you measure this you're going to add 2.5 inches extra for example now I have um my ankle is 10 inches so I added 2.5 inches so I all together now I got 12.5 inches I hope you understand so please 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 I forgot to say this earlier on. please do not forget so by the time um, my 2.5 divided into 2 I marked it and added 1 inch sewing or stitching allowance so like I said earlier on for your knee is totally optional if you feel like you want to measure your knee circumference fine and good but please don't forget that your, uh, at your waistline divide by 4 your hip line 4 your crotch line 2 your knee circumference 2 and your ankle 2 so you get to that point where I just marked 1 inch at that our uh, crotch area so you mark one inch down and you're going to slightly connect this to that our hip area just like this you understand right so just follow this method and you're going to come out with something nice so i've i've gone ahead to join that part so this is all for the front part so i'm going to cut out everything which you have so i folded my other fabric and placed my front panel on top of it and from that point that crotch area I'm going to extend that line um, or your crotch area by 1.5 just the way I did so on your full length you're actually going to come out by one inch please if you're not used to your free hand you can go get a trouser curve so you don't make a mistake while curving your trouser okay so at that point my hand is now I came out by one inch as well and you could connect it to your hip line or hip length whatever so on that point now where I am, I'm going up by one inch, which is that one inch we previously removed from the front part. I will add additional one inch, and then from that part we are going to connect it down to the waistline. And you know it's it's actually going to be slant, slanted, yeah. So now we're going to connect this crotch line up to that point, okay? So you're not going to cut exactly under your crotch. So in order to in order not to make mistakes so you just from that point come up by 1.5 inch and just connect exactly the way i connected here okay so because i'm adding a zipper to the back of my trouser i'll be adding a zipper to this part as well after tracing on my crotch line i hope you understand right so from there i'm going to come up by one inch because i'm using one inch as my zipper allowance since my zip will be at the back but if it was going to be at the side or for the front i wasn't going to add anything but because it's going to be at the back so mm -hmm. i'm adding one inch which i just added and this is how you should connect so now we are done with this back part and we are going to join from the crotch line all the way down to the full length let me repeat this again if you are not used to using a freehand please do ensure you get a trouser curve please so once you are done with all of this you connect just like this so after connecting you're going to cut out everything which you have at this point okay so now I've cut out for the back and this is the front part actually so you're going to cut for the pocket so I placed um, this shoulder the right side facing each other the cross uh, is facing each other and the hip length everything is aligning just place it exactly the same way I placed my just place yours the same way I placed mine. So under your hip area, I'm going to mark two inches. Okay, so you come down and you mark um, six or seven inches, just the way I marked here. So you're going to slightly, or you're going to curve like this, just the way I curved, with your free hand or with your curved rule. Whichever one you make use of, but just make sure that you're actually accurate with what you are doing. So that's all, and you're just going to cut this out like this. So, and I just drafted um, um, 
this piece for the I'll be using for the pocket and for the length I have 12 inches and for the width on fold I have 8 inches so you can go ahead to mark um to cut out any length and width which is suitable for you but for me I just told you what I used so like this now on fold I'm just going to make a curve on this um pocket before showing you how to actually cut it and also sew it together with your trouser so i opened this up like this i hope you see how i opened this up so i placed my two um the two front panels of my trouser on it please um that part sorry that my camera didn't really get to the edge of this um this pocket but i will try as possible as much as possible to explain so you understand very well so you are going to make um the that 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 part to align with the, the edge of the pocket i hope you understand because that part now that's um on my that's on my left hand side is actually the pocket so from there you just place it to align exactly with the edge of the pocket i hope you understand so you're going to cut out that's just the only thing I did for that part so after I must have done this I removed the unwanted piece of the fabric so now this is it and I'll go ahead now to like drag this out on my lining to cut out my lining as well so I've cut out my lining and um, both for the back and for the front so the next thing I start stitching and that part that is actually facing me, that pointed part, please don't misplace, misplace your two parts because the pocket actually kind of looks like a crotch. So that part actually is my crotch line. And the way you see my hand go, that's the way you should stitch from the waist down to that crotch part. Please don't misplace that with your pocket side. So now, I'll go ahead and join that part. So now after joining, you see, I joined the two, the front parts, the, that's on the crotch area. I joined the two parts and now I will show you how to add your pocket. So like I said earlier on, you know the, the way we cut out, right? So you are going to, um, okay, that part is actually the right hand side of my trouser. So you're going to get your pocket, one part of it, you're going to place exactly so that it will align just like this, exactly like this. So it's going to align, please make sure it aligns this way. So you're going to pin this first and after pinning, you go ahead and stitch from the top up to that point where my hand just stopped. So I've gone ahead now to stitch. And this is what I have. So remember that um, I still have the pocket on top of my fabric. I don't know if you just watch what I'm doing very well. So I just stitch that part and I'm going to turn this over like this. And you know that remaining part there. Yeah, that part we stitch. We're going to we are going to use it and top stitch on the main fabric and not on the pocket. Like we are stitching like on we are top stitching on top of your trouser. I hope you understand what I mean, right? So now after top stitching, this is what you have. This is what, if you don't have something like this, then you, you are not getting it or you are not following what I am doing. So once I'm done with this, I'll show you how to actually bring this together and Tada, our pockets will be ready. So, when you turn it, it will actually be like this. So, you try as much as possible to make sure that that curvy part at the end there aligns with the pockets. Just watch very, very well. You are not going to miss out if you actually watch what I'm doing very well. You see now, that pointed part, like the down part of the curve which you made have aligned with the pockets, that part, right? So try as much as possible to make this align. And for the top part as well, this is how you do it. And I'll just hold mine with a pin, office pin. I'll just pin this down. You see it, right? So it's actually aligned. So you're going to raise this up. And from that part, from that, from that 
part where the curve ended you are going to stitch from there all the way down then you curve your hand as well and you stop at that point where you actually curve this yours can be straight if you like but me i always curve mine So that's basically it for the pocket. So I'll just go ahead to do exactly what I showed you guys. And I've done that already. So we are done with that part. So for that top part. And these are the back of yours should be. If you're actually getting what I've been trying to explain since. So for that top part. You're just going to stitch. You know it's still open. So you remove your pin. And you're just going to stitch that part under your waistline you see that's it and we're done with this pocket so you see my hand is fitting in my hand just fitted so well so i'll do that for the both parts and i have gone ahead to do this for the both parts and this is our fine pocket so we are almost done trust me because making a trouser is not that hard at all so now i'm trying to get this very well so you see <laughs> So this is just it. So um, the next thing now is to start joining. So having joined these two front parts of our trouser, and that part, the um, okay, how will I explain this? That part which I'm holding now is the right side of my trouser, or the right hand side. So I'm going to place directly right side facing each other, each panel on each other. I hope you understand. And this part too is my left hand side. So we are going to stitch on the waistline with one inch and on the hip line to the end. We're going to stitch with half an inch. And so I've gone ahead to do this, and you can see it. I carefully did this and is what i have so i'll go ahead now to draft for my band so remember i told you my band will be one inch so on fold i have two inches i'll be taking in half inch at both sides and i'll be left with one inch so now back to the trouser panel i'll just teach you guys how to stitch this up so by the time you must have joined the two um back to the front to remember that the crotch line the crotch part is still open you are going to measure Okay, you're going to take your final measurements at this point. So I'm going to measure my um, waist, which is 33, divided by 2. I'll have 16 and a half. So I'll just mark it there. And I'm going to measure my hip circumference. And I have a um, hip circumference of 42. So divided into 2, I have um, um 21, right? So... I will go ahead as well to mark it there. And if you are joining your zip to the back, you're not going to join from the, like your zip. So you're not going to join from the waist down to the crotch part. You're going to curve this just the way I curved that. So I actually did that for you guys to see how to add your zipper for the back. So it doesn't go inside your bum bum. And this is the zip I'll be making use of. It's a red zip. So please don't forget the white sash. So once you are done with this, Let's assume that we've joined the crotch area that by adding our zip first. So you come to your ankle. Remember, you're going to take the measurements for this ankle, for this your, at your trouser full length now, the ankle, right? So, but if it was for your palazzo, we're just going to join with one or half an inch. But here, we are going to bring this together because if you should watch very well, you know that the back is bigger than the front. And that was actually the main the whole idea so you are going to bring it together like this and you are going to take your measurements so you see mine is six and a half so um you just take the measurement there and that's basically all 
and you join so now here is the final look of my trouser looking all nice you can see my pockets right so i think i made this tutorial in a hurry or something i don't know but i actually have a tutorial how to draft a trouser so thank you for watching you can so you can go ahead as well to check up that other tutorial thank you for watching please don't forget to subscribe you can actually do your see you next time on the same channel bye